Hi everybody, and welcome back to another review. Today we are taking a look at this, the Mass Drop Buck, designed by Ferrum Forge and produced by Wee Knives. So like I've been doing lately, I'll just start right into the specs on my review sheet. Uh, these are a combination of my own measurements and what Mass Drop listed. I usually use Blade HQ, but since this is a Mass Drop knife and it's sold on Mass Drop, they don't have all the exact measurements I needed, so we'll just get right into those. Overall length of 7.8 inches, blade length of 3.5 inches, cutting edge of 2 uh, and 15 sixteenths. I didn't round that up to 3 because some people really like to be under three inches for the cutting edge just for legal reasons I think. Uh, handle length of four and a quarter inches. Blade thickness of 0.16, pretty nice and stout blade thickness. Handle thickness of 0.47. The blade shape is a modified sheep's foot, kind of a cleaver style looking but has a nice belly. Plain edge and it says it's saber ground. I just call that like a like a normal flat grind, but uh, saber ground, I guess. Blade material over here says kind of reflective. There we go. S35VN right next to the Mass Drop logo. And the handle material is 6AL4V titanium. The weight is 3.6 ounces, so not too bad, with a tip-up reversible pocket clip. As you can see, it is a frame lock with a steel lock bar insert and a ceramic detent ball inside there. It is on caged steel bearings. Very nice and smooth, especially with the ceramic detent ball. It has a thumb or a finger flicking hole. I'm not calling it a thumb hole because I've never been able to open it with my thumb, but very good at finger flicking it. And the, I don't know if I said over travel stop on the stainless steel lock insert, but also has over stop built in or over travel stop built in. has nice jimping around the back of the knife and on the flipper tab, as well as a geared back spacer. Very thick jimping. Can't really feel it in your hand when it's like this, but a reverse grip if you ever actually need to do that. I've never actually needed to do a reverse grip, but seems to be made pretty well for that. And it also has a lanyard hole right back in the back spacer and a very big full finger choil. Not a little half one or anything. This is big enough for my fat fingers to fit. So very nice for up close cuts. And that's about it for the specs and features. Has a satin blade, uh, tumbled bronze titanium scales, and a blue clip. Those kind of go into the appearance and design section of my review. So, as you can see, very sleek design. Sleek handle, thicker blade, but still really not too big, but a very skinny handle. And it feels good with that 0.47 blade or, uh, handle thickness. It still feels big enough in the hand to not, not be like a, a little micro knife or anything. The geared backspacer right there. Uh, you can kind of see it. I guess it doesn't stick up behind there. Well, maybe a little. Kind of feels like it sticks up a little around the scales, so you can kind of see it. And that is also blued titanium. Like I said, blue clip, blue backspacer. The blade is satin, but it's also around the edges, like in the finger choil. Nice and polished. Up there, pretty polished. And then another satin on the flat and on the 
swedge right there. Also a nice chamfer around everything. The whole handle's chamfered. The blade right there. And up around the, the thumb hole, I guess I could call it, up on the back. Very nice even chamfer around all the edges. And I'll show the Ferrum Forge logo. Ferrum, Ferrum Forge design. You can see the two Fs in the shield. Very cool logo and doesn't disrupt the, disrupt the design or anything. And I already showed the Mass Drop logo, but there it is again on the blade. Not too big, doesn't really take up much of the blade. The S35VN is a very skinny lettering, so that doesn't take up any space or look ugly or anything. Now we'll get into what I like about the knife, the goods. So, first of all, flipping action, perfect. I love it. I think I might have misflipped it once, just, just like coming off the flipper wrong, but perfect detent. Like if you try, I'm going to try as hard as I can not to deploy it all the way. Let's see if I can do it. Nope. That was my try to deploy it halfway. There we go. That was the first time I've ever done that. Nope. Okay. Pretty hard to deploy it without it opening all the way. So, very good flipping action. The blade finish is actually better than I expected, and I'll go into that later in the comparisons. But when you look at the pictures online, you look at the Crux and um, a couple of the other knives, and I looked at the pictures and saw, like, just kind of bad looking satin on the blades, but when I got it, looked at it, it looked pretty nice, better than I was expecting. So that's one good thing at least. Uh, the price is unbeatable from what I've seen. Uh, this was 115 with free shipping. Uh, S35VN, titanium handle, everything you'd need, bearings, all for the cheapest I've seen it, I think, and it is really well made. So for $115, I think this is the best knife you can get. The size is really nice. So you can see there it is in my full hand, but open, fit all my four fingers on it. Thumb goes nice into the jimping, or I can choke up if I want, and it's just a really nice size. It's nice and sleek in the pocket, so that little bump kind of bumps out a little, but other than that, I mean, that's about like an inch right there from back to front, so very nice and skinny in the pocket, and it's so smooth. Stainless ball bearings and a ceramic detent make it an insanely smooth knife. Just drops shut. I haven't taken it apart, I haven't cleaned it, I haven't done anything to it. Just opened it up and started using it, and it just came smooth as can be. The jimping is really functional. So, open like that, you could feel your thumb really grips into it, as well as the jumping, or the jimping on here. I think, let me look at it. It actually is so deep jimping that I get a bunch of... I don't know, probably dead skin or something in there, so. Now it's all back to grippy again, so watch out about that. Um, finger flicking, nice and easy. I've had a lot of practice with spider codes and everything, so I'm pretty used to it. So right when I got it, I was able to just flick it right out, especially with a long opening hole like this. If I was a shorter opening hole, like just a spidey hole or something, It'd be a little harder to do it because the hole would be way up here. So down here you have a little more leverage to flip that open. So nice and easy. And the pocket clip. I'll give some close-ups on that. Works really well. Slides nice in and out of the pocket. It's uh, tall enough to fit into jeans. So I have pretty thick jeans and it slides right in. 
Some of these titanium sculpted clips are a little skinny, so they're not tall enough and they kind of feel weird in jean pockets, but this one works great. And the full finger choil is really nice. It's not a little half choil or anything, and it is chamfered all around and polished, so it feels really good, especially for detailed tasks and everything. If you're really choking up or if that's just more comfortable to you, nice and comfortable to me. Now we'll get on to my gripes, what I don't really like about it. So, like I said, it is tip-up reversible pocket clip, which means this little hole right there, you might be able to see it a little bit. There you can see the threads. So it's a threaded hole in the side of the blade, so if you switch the pocket clip over, you just have a hole right there ready for it. It's kind of ugly. I mean, just the knife right there. You have the lanyard hole right here, and then you have just an open random hole between those two screws. That's kind of ugly. Doesn't really bother me too much, but it is a little ugly and takes a little bit of away from the flat scale. Another bad thing is, like I said, thumb hole. So I can't do it. I've heard other people say it's pretty hard to thumb flip open. So if you're gonna get one and you're not gonna use the flipper much, then be ready to spidey flick it. You know, the Master Up logo, like I complimented the Ferrum Forge design logo, uh, really clean, nicely machined into there, and just a cool design. The Master Up logo is still just kind of cartoony-ish, like Microsoft Word, just boring. It's not too big or anything, just a little ugly. Um, if they could just go to like a little symbol or something, I think that would be better than that. It kind of takes away from the design a little. And there's no skeletonizing. That's no, I listed it as a bad thing. It's not a big deal. It is a skinny knife, so it doesn't really need any skeletonizing. I was just noting that it doesn't have it, so it is a little heavier than it would be if it did have skeletonizing. For $115, I don't expect skeletonizing, and it still feels great without it. And I just noticed the little chamfered edge on the inside of the show scale. So you can get into there a little better into the lock bar. That's another good thing. And last, the blade centering isn't perfect. There you can see favors the right side a little, but it's nowhere close to coming in contact with any of the show side. So it's not a big deal. It's just a little ugly. It hasn't moved or anything. It's not loose. Um, the blades lockup is great no wobble just completely locked up very strong lockup feels and i think my ice maker just turned on so that might be a little loud hopefully you can't hear it but now i'm going to get into some comparisons so like always i compare with my paramilitary 2 because that's the one everybody knows more than likely you've held one or seen one so you can see how skinny the handle is compared to that. The blade is pretty thick compared to it, and the blade thickness should be about the same. Yeah. Handle thickness is pretty close to the same also. There you can see the other side. Overall, it is about the same size, but you can see the handle to blade ratio for each is pretty different, which I like a big handle to, or blade to handle ratio. I like to have a lot of blade, so. I mean, it's a knife, so now we'll get into the browse. And not only am I comparing the sizes of these, but I also, the blade finish of these is kind of similar. There you can see just like the reflection looks the same. So I'll try to pull it up closer to the camera. Uh, here we go. Two in one hand. There you can see the blade finish is kind of similar. Like I was saying when I saw it online, um, the blade finish, I'll go to a size real quick right there overall. But like I was saying with the blade finish, so I, I didn't think it looked that great from the pictures. I was kind of expecting a bad blade finish. And it kind of just reminded me of this type of blade finish from Kershaw, where all of these edges right here 
they're not like crisp edges between the bevel and the flat. Uh, same with up here on the swedge, where they swedge and the beveled meet, and up here on like the swedge to the uh, spine of the blade. They're not very crisp edges. They kind of look like whatever machining process they used was kind of like a quick, cheap method compared to like a more expensive knife, kind of like, I mean, not a very good example because it doesn't have a flat really, but just the grind on the Spyderco looks a little better. So just wanted to compare that blade to a $30 Spyderco. Kind of looks similar, but I mean, the material's better. The finish isn't that bad, so I definitely, definitely am surprised by how good the finish is, but it still kind of just reminds me of a cheap knife, um, which $115, can't expect too much. And finally, my recommendations and my final thoughts on the knife. Uh, actually, before I get into that, I forgot to show at the beginning, which I guess I'll show this at the end from now on probably, but here's the packaging, normal mass drop packaging. I got a little dirty, but Buck Titanium Frame Lock, Mass Drop Ferrum Forge. There's the Mass Drop logo on the pouch, and very nice pouch. Opposite sides, so if your blade's sticking out, it's not going to scratch another blade in there. And it comes with a little silicon packet so it doesn't rust, and there's your Ferrum Forge design. I wonder if there's this Mass Drop on it or anything. Uh, nope, just Ferrum Forge design, so... Cool little microfiber cleaning cloth. Always nice they include those and a pouch and everything. Just makes it feel like a way more professional product that you're getting. So my recommendations, definitely buy it. Buy it if you can. $115. Best knife you can find for $115. Um, the quality is great. We knives, or we, we knives, yeah. We knives makes great knives. They're, uh, Quality control is great. All their hardware, I love their hardware and the pivot and everything. It's all just really, really well made. The anodizing's great. Quality control is just perfect on it, other than a little bit of a centering issue, but everything seems really nice. Oh. Another good thing was the free shipping. So $115 with free shipping from Mass Drop. That's really cool. And uh, if you look at the other Mass Drop knives, they have a Brad Zinker knife, about $120, I think. They have a, um, oh, what's the other one called? Uh, I don't know, Laconico? Yeah. They have a Laconico flipper, I think. A um, couple other knives. They have other Ferrum Forge knives, so. If you don't really like this design, but you're really intrigued by the price, check out Mass Drop for the other knives because, I mean, the other knives are, I think the most I saw one was like $149. So great prices all around, even $149 for titanium stainless steel or S35 VN stainless steel. Definitely a great deal. And one last thing, so... This knife, produced by Wee Knives in China, was $115. This knife, produced in the U.S. by Spider Co., is $150, I think, when I bought it. You can get some for $119 now. Some of them are up to like $130 or $140, but whatever. As low as $119, as high as $160, I think I've seen them. And this it was produced in the U.S. by Browse for $170. So, D2 blade steel, aluminum handles... Uh, S30V G10 handles, both more expensive, both made in the U.S. The quality control on these, quality control on this is definitely worse. This is about the same. Pretty great quality control for Spyderco. Uh, they have some issues, but they'll handle them if you do have issues. But just the price for the quality of this knife is unbeatable. If you can't get over the... Uh, buying from a Chinese maker or whatever, then I guess that's the only problem you can have with it. But other than that, I think it is a great buy. Definitely look into it. Um, your local knife store probably won't have them since they're from Mass Drop, unless they bought a bunch from Mass Drop. But other than that, it'd be nice if you could get your hands on one. Maybe a friend has one or something. Check it out. 
I really recommend it. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to check out the other videos, and I'll be back with a review next time.